How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a second year medical student studying in Canada. Now if you're watching this video, there's probably a good chance that you either just got a medical school invite yourself or you've gone and applied to medical school or you're looking to apply to medical school in the future. And I just want to start off by saying, you know, congratulations to everyone. I did have a lot of people message me lately saying that they got interview invites and, and that's awesome. I love hearing the good news. I am genuinely excited for you guys. But just stay calm, take it easy. Now we just got to practice and get ready for interview day. And I mean, that's that, that's definitely easier said than done. I remember when I got my interview invites, I, I just freaked out. I was <laughs> switched into total anxiety mode and was practicing as much as I could. Anyways, though, we're going to keep today's video short and sweet. We're going to get right to the point. Unfortunately, I don't have any time right now because I've been so busy to practice individually with students getting ready for their medical school interviews. So I wanted to get out this video, letting you guys know the number one thing that I think that many, many students need to fix before they show up to the medical school interviews. So what we're gonna do is three things. First, we're gonna identify the mistake that a lot of students make. Then we're gonna talk about how to fix it. And finally, I'm gonna give you guys some homework to get you ready for the interviews. So the biggest mistake that a lot of students make is, you ready for it? not understanding what an ethical dilemma question really is. So at your medical school interview, there are basically three different types of questions you could get. You could either get a personal reflection based question, you could get some sort of ethical dilemma based question, and then finally you could get some sort of activity or acting scenario, something that's more common with an MMI. So here's the example of something that I used to see. I remember a question that used to be passed around back when I was getting ready for interviews, and actually it's probably way more relevant in today's current situation, is the potential interview question of of, do you think that vaccines should be mandatory for everyone? Now, I remember when I was getting ready for my own interviews or when I was helping my friends get ready for theirs or even some other students last year, a very inexperienced answer that you might see for a question like this is that yes, vaccines should be mandated for everyone because the vast evidence and the vast body of scientific literature says that vaccines are safe, they are effective, and they are a good preventative health strategy to stop uh, adverse outcomes in the future. Now, at the surface level, some of you might be thinking, that sounds like a great answer to me. You gave a very decisive answer and then you also gave three supporting details to back up your train of thought. And I mean, certainly nothing that you said in that answer was incorrect. It was all supported by the general consensus within medicine and you are going for a medical school interview. And surely everyone in medical school is 100% in support of vaccines. So what could have possibly been wrong with an answer like that? A lot. There's a lot wrong with that answer. And certainly if you give an answer like that for a question like this, you're not gonna be scoring many points with your interviewer. And the reason why that's the case is because it all goes back to what an ethical dilemma really is. So remember, the definition of an ethical dilemma is a situation in which a difficult choice has to be made between two courses of action, either of which entails transgressing a moral principle. That basically is there to say that these types of questions here have at least two different sides, and it's not all about giving the answer that you think your interviewer wants to hear, but more so about the critical thought that goes behind the ethical dilemma itself. So here's exactly how you guys should be practicing to answer questions like this, especially if you're brand new to the interview game, getting ready to answer these questions. This is the general flow of how you should be practicing because it's gonna help you to understand and actually solve these ethical dilemmas on interview day. The first thing you're gonna do is state the ethical dilemma, understand what the ethical dilemma is here. If we use the vaccine example, the vaccine ethical dilemma is that we have some people that want the vaccine and some people that don't want the vaccine. And if we mandate the vaccine, the people that don't want the vaccine will be forced to do something that they don't want to do. The second thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and state any questions that you're going to want to know the answer to before you go ahead and reach your final conclusion. So in our vaccine example, the first thing that you might want to know is just how effective is this vaccine? And then on that note, how safe is it? Another thing that you might want to know is how large of a problem is this disease, this illness that we're vaccinating for in the average society or in the world? Because surely if the vaccine was proven to be very effective and very safe, and the disease is going to be a big problem in society, this could go ahead and strengthen your arguments or whichever conclusion you end up making towards the end. It's very important that you actually state this gathering information step because it helps show the interviewer that you're actually open to taking in additional pieces of information that's gonna help you make an informed decision. The third step that you're gonna to wanna to do for questions like this is finally list 
two pros and two cons of the argument. It doesn't matter what the ethical dilemma is, there are always going to be at least two sides. And it's your job to find compelling arguments for or against, because if there wasn't arguments for and against, it wouldn't actually be an ethical dilemma. So in our vaccine example, one reason why mandating vaccines might not be a good idea is because it is documented that in some vaccines, like the flu shot, for example, there are actually some negative outcomes that happen in some cases because of the flu shot. So I think the flu shot actually carries between a one to two out of one million risk of developing GBS or Guillain-Barre syndrome after having the flu shot. Now, I mean, one to two out of a million, that's definitely not a big risk. It's a very small risk actually, but to those people that were mandated to have that vaccine and then developed GBS because of it, that's really not fair to them at all. In addition, we also need to think about what the broader implications are of some of these more authoritarian styles of mandating certain health interventions are for people. So for example, if we're forcing people to get vaccinated, are they going to then distrust the healthcare system in the future? Will they be less likely to seek out medical help? And therefore, because of this one vaccination attempt, will we over many, many years increase their risk of actually developing more adverse effects because they don't want to see their doctor anymore? Now, on the other hand, if we talk about the pros of something like this, on the one hand, if the disease is shown to be very deadly or disadvantageous to people and you vaccinate them and the vaccine is effective, you just go ahead and save them any immediate adverse health outcomes. And in addition, by vaccinating more people, you're also contributing to a group's herd immunity. And in that sense, one additional vaccination could actually help protect more than just that one person if you could get enough people vaccinated. And in the final step is that you take the pros, you take the cons, you take any additional information that you're able to get, and you finally come up with a final answer, which could either be yes, no, or somewhere in the middle. And where that actually falls is gonna to be totally dependent on what the actual question was asking, um, any additional information that you're able to get out of the interviewers, or whatever you actually believe the correct answer to be, because that's one of the things with these ethical dilemmas. A lot of times there is no right or wrong answer, but more so the way you actually come about to reaching that final answer. And one bonus tip, sometimes at the end of this entire flowchart, you'll have an interviewer that kind of just throws a curveball in right at the end and says something along the lines of, what happens if you were given this additional piece of information. And this really throws a lot of students off because some students just kind of think, oh, I need to stick true to the answer that I gave first because if I deviate now, it'll show signs of weakness. But in my opinion, what I think is that you should always go ahead and state that your conclusion and your interpretation of the question is always going to be open to change depending on any additional information that's presented to you. If there's one thing that I learned here in medical school, it's that we could try our best with the information that's available to us, but our opinion should always be open to change in the future based on the most current evidence that we have. And if you guys don't believe me on that, just take a good look at some of the literature about treating UTI infections or preventing UTI infections by advising people to drink cranberry juice. Changes all the time. But yeah, I think that is definitely one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of students make when they're first getting ready for their medical school interviews in terms of just being too one-sided with their answers when it comes to these ethical dilemmas. Go ahead and just stay calm, examine all the pieces of information, give some pros and some cons, and finally reach your end answer in the end. And good luck to everyone getting ready. Now for homework and anyone getting ready to practice and you guys want a really good question to start thinking about for yourselves, I'm actually gonna go ahead and link a free uh, MMI question bank in the description below. But in addition, my one question that I thought was really helpful in me getting ready for analyzing these different ethical questions is the question, do you think that doctors should be allowed to go on strike? Now that's definitely a, a heated topic to, to debate and one that should be a lot of fun. So good luck to everyone practicing one more time. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section below. We'll see you all in the next one. Everyone take care.